Jay Sealin. Hey, get inspired, Miss Shiana. I'm Diane Bennett with Remax 100 and Inspired Homes, and we're here for a special edition of Life Inspired. We have some special guests with us today. This is Dan Blacketer and Glory Jay Sealin. And we are having this odd time for our inspired life inspired stories because um, Glory's in from India visiting the United States and her Fridays were all booked up so we could not get her on Friday mornings at 930 mm -hmm. and we knew this was going to be a very special story. This might be a long one so hang in there. It's a lot to watch um, but we're really excited to share this story with you guys. So we're going to do, if you remember, life inspired stories are life is going along and then dot 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 something changes changes in your life and now you're living an inspired life and you're following God and doing something that he inspired you to do and so we're going to start with Dan's story and how you got to the Rima project and how that started so tell us your story before the dots what was life like you're a, you sold insurance I, I'm an insurance agent so I, I've sold insurance for over 30 years right and I've been volunteering uh, all that time, and it really I'd been volunteering with Habitat for Humanity here locally. Okay. Um, and then the tsunami in India hit. Right. And I was contacted by one of our pastors at our church and said, Hey, Dan, you know how to build houses. We want you to lead a team to India to help rebuild houses. Okay. Now, I know how to build houses in Indiana, but not India. Wow. He said, Don't worry about that. Just take a team over. We're there just to help the locals rebuild their, their houses. So okay. that's what took me to India. Okay. So the dot, dot, dot for you was the tsunami hit. The tsunami. And the church came knocking on your door. So you went to India, and I remember a story that you shared with me. Right. So I'd been to India about three or four times. Okay. And we had stopped in a village to pick up a family that was going to help us for the week interpret. Okay. And as soon as we stopped the car, uh, a family walked in front of me. And the, 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 the woman, the lady, the mother, was holding a young baby. And her, her top was wet and the baby was wet. And um, her husband was walking next to her, uh, and a little boy. And then it looked like her in-laws or maybe her parents were walking behind her. And it was one of those strange events where it was a Sunday afternoon. So as a Christian, I'm thinking, well, maybe it was a baptism. But I knew they don't baptize infants in India. And then everybody was just very, very sad. The mother was weeping, and everybody just very quiet. And so it was one of those times that it was just very strange. So I asked the person I was with, what's going on? And why are they crying? And why are they crying? You know, it was not happy tears. Right. So uh, he goes, you really don't want to know. And so I said, really, I do. And then he said, well, they probably just uh, went down to the river, and they've taken the life of their daughter. Um, because she was going to be a financial burden for them, and then they'll just quietly go home and bury her so no one will know. And this is the first time you'd ever heard any of this? I had heard the words female infanticide, but it really just went in one ear and out the other. I really didn't pay that much attention to it. Until you saw this family? Until it was that, that, it, that situation, mm -hmm. and then it just stopped me in my tracks. Uh, and I truly just felt this feeling of, what are you going to do about it? Um, and that, that really stayed with me the entire week or 10 days that I was in India. Mm -hmm. So the first day you got there is when that happened? One of the first days, yes. So you came home I and came, you kept feeling like, what are you going to do about it? I came home and I kept doing my job. So I worked during the day, I'd come home, I'd get on the internet and I'd start to study about it because truly I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So I started to study about it and I heard how invasive it was that it literally takes a life up, up to 3 million baby girls every year in wow. India, uh, which was just overwhelming to me. Uh, and then I started to get the feeling of the answers are already there. I, I'm just asking you to go and try to find the answers because I kept making excuses. Um, I'm from Indiana, not from India. I'm a guy, not a, this is a female issue. Uh, I don't know what's going on. And over and over again, it was, go back. The answers are there. I just want you to help unlock the answers. And when you started the REMA project, you named it the REMA project after, I forget who. That's after the first baby girl that we met in the first village that we visited on what, our first exploratory trip. So we went back, we started to visit with organizations that were doing things within India to help the girl child. And then on the very last day of that, that trip, we went into a very, very remote village. 
that we knew several hundred girls' lives were lost every year in just wow. this one village. And we were just walking through the village playing with the kids, and um, then all of a sudden the elders showed up, and the hot chai tea showed up, and they asked us to sit down and, and chat. And we started to talk about the issue, and of course they, they told us it didn't happen because mm -hmm. they thought we were there to Turn report them, in or them something. something. Well, and can you, because Facebook's watching, and they don't know why is it a financial burden in India to have a girl? Why are they killing the girls and the boys are okay? Because they don't know that. Great question. What it is is when a, a girl gets married, there's a dowry set, and it can be what the, her parents must give the husband's parents to take this financial burden off their, their table. So, for example, when Glory got married, there could have her been family would have to pay the husband's family Five for to the seven wedding. times the amount of their annual income. Five to seven times so of one year's income. So a, a peasant farming family that might earn $1,000 a year would might come up with $7,000 when their daughter gets married. But in India, if it's a boy, then that comes back to them and that really is their retirement account, that is their social security, that's, that's their way of, of making sure they're taken care of when they're when not they're able to, to mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So that's what's driving the preference for boys in India. Okay. And so you go back and REMA Project is kind of born and how do you get involved with Bethel and Meet Glory? When well, is... again, REMA Project hadn't even been born yet. We okay. were just going into the village to figure out what, what what was some solutions. Okay. So we're sitting down talking to the elders of this village and literally within 10 feet from me was a young mother holding a brand new baby girl. Okay. And I, I kind of caught her out of the sight of my eye. She was watching what was going on and I had visited another organization called Bethel right before that and what I learned there just the day before that baby girls were never married or not, I'm sorry, never named. Oh, baby when, girls were not named. Ever. When they're first born. Oh, when they're born. Okay. Okay. And their life is never celebrated. So just like here in America, when a baby is born, everybody brings gifts over and, you know, everything happens. Well, that still happens in India if you have a son. But if you have a daughter, it doesn't happen. So that's what I knew walking into that village. So as a Westerner, as a white man, you're given some special privileges sometimes when you're in villages. Because okay. you're a celebrity to, to a certain step. Okay. So I'm, I see this, and I just ask the people that we're with, what is um, the baby? Is it a boy or is it a girl? They asked her around, and they said, it's a baby girl. And it was one of those moments I said, oh, it would be such a privilege for me to name her while I'm in the village. Because I knew once a girl is named, then the decision to end her life or allow her to live is kind of no longer on the table. If she, she has a name, they don't want to... It's a person then. Wow. So she, her mother brought her over. Uh, I asked her if I could help hold her. And then I just asked the children, what should we call her? And they, they picked the name Rama. Well, it was one of the three names that they picked, but it was the one that I could say. <laughs> <laughs> so I just simply said a quick prayer, and I said, your name will be Rama. And in my uh, shirt pocket... I had several hundred rupees that turned out to be about six or seven dollars. Okay. And I just pulled them out and I handed it to the mother and I said, use this money to buy something nice for your daughter or for you to take care of her. Wow. I handed her back and that was the end of it. But on the trip out of that village that afternoon, I had heard that same voice that says, see, even a white man from Indiana can do something. And that's when we started the Rama Project because we named that first girl in the wow. first village Rama. Wow. Very cool. Okay, so how do we get to Bethel and how did Glory get here? Well, one of the first stops that we made on that exploratory trip was to Bethel because the director at that point had just finished his dissertation on female infanticide in this area. Wow. So we went to visit Dr. Titus and he was sharing with what he had studied, what he had learned, and he literally handed me a book that was like three inches thick that he had just typed out and printed wow. off and said, take this, this is all that I know, uh, you will learn much more about it. So that was the, the relationship. And Bethel was at the time just um, a 
what do we say, an orphanage? At it the time, look, it was looked, just an orphanage. It looked like an orphanage. They had, uh, about the same time, had gone through a transition or started a transition away from an orphanage that there might be 3,000 children living on the campus. Okay. That included a school, included a hospital, included a baby home. They took care of these children, 3,000 children, from age zero, just a couple days old, up until 18 or 19 when they would get married or, or complete their college education. Okay. They knew they were not making a great impact in their area around them to change the cultural mindset on the value of children, especially the value of, of, of girls. Mm -hmm. So they had made a decision that we, we need to move away from what's called residential care. Here in America, we'd call it boys' homes or girls' homes, right? Okay. To how do we start making impact in the villages around us to start to change the cultural value of, of all life? Okay. So they were moving away from orphanage more to a community impact. Okay. So we got involved with them. We started to help with certain projects that they're doing because everything the REMA project does, we do through Indian organizations. Right. We don't have a staff here in America. We don't have a staff in India. We work through local organizations with India because one of the things that I truly believe that Indians must solve this problem. Mm -hmm. I as an American, we as Americans can't solve it. Mm -hmm. We can lend a helping hand, but they must own it. They must solve it long term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got connected with Bethel mm -hmm. um, almost eight years ago now. Okay. Wow. Okay, Glory. Mm -hmm. So you grew up at Bethel. Yes, I was. My father and mother, they both were working in Bethel. My father worked for past 37 years, and now he is in heaven. My mother, still she is working in Bethel. I grew up in Bethel, and Bethel atmosphere, I was there, and studied in Bethel Metropolitan School up to my high school. Then I did my graduates outside, graduations I finished. We are three daughters in a family, so three are well educated. And Which is so unusual for India, yes. to have three girls. Yes, three girls. And you're the youngest. Yes, I'm the youngest among them. My dad is, uh, is always proud to have a girl ch child. He used to say, we are the property of my dad. So really, my dad is that type of person. So we grew up there and all were settled in a good places and with a good salaries and good life we got it. So I also finished my graduations like BSc nursing I finished, MSc psychologist I finished. And after that I, I was working in Bangalore with good, uh, with all good life. And um, Dan said that Bangalore is a big city like Chicago. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so you had left the village area, and what, what city is Bethel in? Is it in a Bethel, village? Yes, it's a village. It's, it's like a rural place. Okay. It's a village. Okay. So I, I, I was working in Bangalore. I got married, and I could have a, had a kid, everything. I was settled there uh, with a happy life, with a modern middle life I was having. That's a thing as 2014, my father passed. Unexpectedly, so, yes, he met with an accident. Mm. He is about to. He came for the lunch break, and he's back to his office. On the way, he met with an accident. So, because of that situation, I left Bangalore. I came back to Bethel. Mm -hmm. That's my situation. Mm -hmm. So I was there for eight months. So next, what we were going you were, to do? You were yes. back at Bethel for eight months. Yes. Okay. For. Uh, I back to Bethel because my funeral, my dad's funeral service, all the process. I didn't back go to Bangalore. I didn't do that. I want to stay in Bethel itself. So I, because I want to take care of my mother. Right. Because we three daughters, there is no son to take care of my mother. And so, in India, it's normal for the son to care for. Yes, obviously, that's the culture of us. Okay. So we don't have that. So one of us, we have to do that. So I, I said I will do that. And your husband is so generous that yes, he's willing to, yes, to he, move you both back. Because he always used to see my father and mother as their father and mother. Aww. So they loved. And so I stayed back in Bethel. I want to take care of my mother. That's the reason I first I was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And after that, I joined in Bethel. 
I got, had a vision. We were, we were praying. Myself and my husband was praying what to do how in, my, in our life. What, what is the plan? God showed us Bethel. We joined there. So I joined in the community college, Bethel Community College. Okay. There we will train nursing students. We will train the students in nursing. So there I was working. My husband is working in Bethel too. So we will go by near the villages. We will see the girl children mm -hmm. and will motivate them because maybe they will do the higher studies. They will finish up. After that, they won't able to go for studies or the because of the family situations, they will not do that. So we will pick up like that children, unprivileged women. So, like, if you go into the villages and they're not caring for their child and they're going to let their child... They will say because of the economic, financial problem, we will not allow the girl children to study. Or uh, that's maybe one reason. The other reason, why the girl children need to study? What is the purpose? Anyway, they're going to get married and going to live with the other persons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they are not productive for us. That's the reason they will not send them. So okay, so they do send the boys to school, but they don't send the girls to school. So yeah. you go in to get the girls? Many times they'll go to a public school, mm -hmm. so they'll get what we would call a high school education. Okay. But then after that, girls are just returned to the village, and, and they're waiting to be married to someone. Okay. So that's where Glory comes in and, and, and asks them to come to community college. And she's being very humble. When Three years ago, our community college was a one-year certificate program. Um, the students there would become almost a nursing aide. Mm -hmm. uh, they would do very small tasks within the hospital. But it was a great step up for them because many of these young women in the village, if they could work, they would probably earn less than a dollar a day mm -hmm. if they found work. Well, just by getting the certificate, uh, they went from earning a dollar a day maybe to over a hundred dollars a month. Wow. which was a significant change. But over the last three years, Glory has built that into an accredited university or accredited college that the girls not only can get a two-year nursing degree that will now take their income to much higher than that, that, that they can also then go on to a four-year university mm -hmm. and become a full nurse. Wow. And these are village girls that had no opportunity before. But because you're an Indian woman. Indian woman, I was grown up in the same village. So I know So how my father made us to this situation. The same thing I want to do for the girls mm -hmm. who are there. They should also have what I got a better future. Mm -hmm. I got a better life. The same thing the children also, the mm -hmm. girls who are there, they need to get mm -hmm. it. So that's the, my motivation. Your father left you a legacy, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, he's up there praying for you all the time, isn't he? Yes, I, uh, I have all that all the way. I was thinking that, still. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there, now you're about to be the director of the school. Now, is that correct? Or you already are? She is what they call the principal. principal. Okay, the principal, uh, yes. which would be here in America, much closer to a director okay. of the community college. Okay. But she's also going to be assuming the responsibilities of overseeing nursing care uh, at the hospital that's on Bethel's grounds. For, so the last several years it's been closed. It's really almost a clinic. It was a thriving hospital for many, many years. That's a whole different story of why it closed or slowed down. But now it's reopening. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve about 25 villages in the area. Wow. And then Glory's going to make sure that the, the nursing care is at the highest level. It will also be a teaching hospital for the nursing students. Oh, great. So that will be the, where their second year of study will be actually in the hospital working with the Clinicals. staff. Clinicals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So Dan recruited you to come to America for this two-week trip? Is that How did you get here in America? Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> the next week, that is, we have a nursing conference. Oh, okay. Yes, in Barrel Institute, it's going to happen held a conference for that purpose and I have a me meetings with the donors oh awesome so, because you've got a lot of people that donate to Rima oh, project that's right and then to therefore to Bethel they're, therefore to Bethel right but. and so you get to meet them because they're yes. supporting you yes. and they get to ask you yes, sure. right, does it make you nervous to meet all these people not much but I'm happy to see all those things because sure. they are uh, 
I don't know anyone right. because Dan only knows everyone. But <laughs> <laughs> now I'm meeting them and saying thank you uh-huh. for all the supports and what they are doing for Bethel. Really, I'm happy to do that. Right, right. Well, he's so delighted that you're here. We've been yes. talking about this for a little bit. He's been telling me about your trip and stuff. So, okay, so there could be people watching us. What Do we want to ask them, like, how could they help? They could pray for Rima Project. They can pray for Bethel. Right. What are some special prayer requests that they could be praying for? Literally, we have a website. Okay. Okay. So they and can, we'll get the website linked. TJ's going to link that for you. Okay. Okay. So they can go to the website. They can read more about all that we're doing okay. uh, in India. And, and truly, um, when we first started the Raymer Project, it was a gift of $7 to celebrate a life. Wow. Because you gave seven. Because I gave seven. Wow. Uh, we can literally rescue a baby girl from someone that doesn't want to keep her, help her find what we call her forever family in India. And that's a couple hundred dollars to do that. Okay. You can sponsor a, a child to go into matriculation school. Could, that could be a hundred dollars a year. Okay. Or a nursing student under Glory's uh, leadership. That's about four hundred dollars. So okay. everybody can get involved, whether it be one is sponsoring one student or one to give a small gift. It's amazing what a little amount of money does right, in right, India. Right. Right. You know, so many people don't do things. Because they say, well, I don't have a lot to give. Right. But even a couple dollars makes a huge difference. Okay, so if you want to support them, look for the website that we're going to link here and look for prayer requests. The most important thing you can do is pray for them. More than giving your money, the best thing you can do for them is pray for them. So if you don't have money, don't feel like you can't do anything, you can pray for them. Um, If you want to give a little bit of money, sounds like $7 will help save a, a baby girl's life. Or there's other uh, donation amounts that you can do. $100 will pay for a little girl to have school for a year. Um, $400 will pay for a young woman to have nursing school for a year. That's crazy, $400. Yes. Will pay. I mean, that's just, people go buy a new cell phone for twice that now. I know. You know, that's just, okay, you don't need your cell phone this year. Wait a year. Wait six months. (laughs) Six months later, you can get your new cell phone. Wow, that's really crazy. So any other last-minute things we want to ask people or tell people? Really, Diane, we just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity yeah, to share I'm excited. Uh, our story and Glory's story yes. because she truly is an example of what many of these young girls, many of these young women can become. We truly believe they will be the change agents for India mm-hmm. in the next 20 years. So she is our poster child. Thank mm-hmm. you, poster child. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very cool. All right. Any last things? Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. Well, Continue your prayers and support. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching on Facebook. And um, you got opportunities. Messages here if you know other stories that need to be shared. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, Facebook. Bye.